Okay, so with the Unreal Engine 5.1, the enhanced input is now lethal. So I was like trying to do something with my DualSense controller and figured like, uh, you know, just putting up a tutorial because I can't find any info on the internet other than the older, like, uh, I think DualShock 4 uh, raw input uh, related information. So I was trying to record this. Uh, this is actually a second take because I found something interesting about D-pad. Uh, so first thing first, we need to go to the plugins and then enable raw input. <coughs> it's just called Windows raw input here. Uh, turn it on, restart the usual stuff. And then afterward, you need to go to project settings. Uh, here project settings go all the way down to plugins uh, row input and then you need to find the uh, device vendor ID and product ID uh, I'll show you in a little bit so this basically lets you map any USB uh, compliant input device like a game controller and allow you to do um, inputs basically. Uh, how do you find this? So you go to Windows settings, go to Bluetooth and other devices, and then click on the device and printers. Uh, first thing first, uh, after you have this open up, uh, I only have one here, you might have multiple depending on how many you hooked or done before and then you go to the game controller settings properties and then make sure it is this is actually the controller you are doing uh, the mappings uh, for the row input device and then you can take time to you know uh, mapping out okay which one which button number corresponding to which thing. For example, uh, mute button is 15, <laughs> right? Here, and then like D pads and then make sure everything is working. So that's the controller we are mapping. And then you right click properties, go to hardware, to this HID compliant game controller, click on the properties go to details and then go to the hardware IDs then you can see there is a VID underscore 054C this is our vendor ID and then PID underscore 0CE6 this is our product ID so just you know note it down and then uh, put it into the row input config so let's close those so that's where how I got my numbers right now after you create it's going to list a bunch of things uh, here um, I'm going to put the the mapping on description so the important part is you once we figure out which axes are the sticks we need to click this game stick checkbox here uh, for dual sense is three, four, five, and six for left and right stick. So that's that, and then you go all the way to eight. Well, I'll explain <laughs> why it go all the way to eight. I think by default it gives you eight as well. And button property is goes like all the way to twenty. Here, uh, you can have more, way more if your device have more. If you see this, like it, it goes all the way to like. 96 right so like by default you just go to 19 if you're some fancy controller you can do that as well so once this is done uh, you might have to restart the editor and then uh, it, it's gonna work properly so let me show you quickly what I have so move around uh, you have y to 1 y to negative 1 x negative 1 x1 like that and then I have triggers the R2s L2s 
Yeah, they are all working properly. Uh, jump button is on the button two, and then the D pads. Okay, D pads is a little bit more complicated. I'll explain in a bit. Uh, how do you set this up? <coughs> Once you have the third person template up, <coughs> you basically have this uh, input mapping context set up for you. And what you need to do is you open it up, and then let's say we want to start mapping the axis, right? So this that's the move and look one, right? I'll I'll explain these later. So, uh, because I already done some research, uh, I already know like a six, five and six is the left stick, and then three and four is the right stick. So once you have the sticks input, you know they are going from uh, negative one to one. And then you just need to put it, put in a dead zone for the horizontal one. Uh, input axis six is horizontal, and then axis five, you can have the swizzle input to switch the. It explains here, so it's basically switch the uh, axis input into y uh, for the mapping. So that's what you need to do for the vertical axis. Uh, if you have like a composite, uh, say if you have joystick, you need to do this for a different axis, axis as well. Uh, so usually it's just like one doesn't require the swizzle and then the other requires the swizzle. Just that's the general rule. Um, and uh, I also have dead zone. Dead zone is usually just default, doesn't matter. And then negate. Negate basically invert the direction of your input. Uh, if you don't want like it, you can, you know, look up other enhanced input uh, tutorial to figure out how to do the, your own user mapping and other fancy, uh, you know, responsive curve type type of thing. But um, my intention is just to teach you how to set up DualSense controller wired. So same thing for the. Same thing for the uh, look controller. So for the look, I didn't have the negate, so I didn't do the up down switch here. Uh, but otherwise, it's basically all default values. Uh, and then say if I want to have something because because uh, right after you set up third person template, there is no uh, input actions for triggers right but I want to know if my trigger are getting proper value so what I did is go to the input actions and then create those extra uh, three the R2, L2 and then D-pad one for my uh, output and then you can see like once I created I basically only change this from digital to access 1D and then save the action uh, same thing for uh, L2 and then I did s originally set this to D-pad to 2D I thought it was 2D but it actually just 1D I'll explain in a bit so same thing you just put them all together uh, in the BP third person character uh, I just basically put in a bunch of uh, print actions you know just to see what what's triggering the enhanced input and then I put down my uh, R2, L2 and d action here and that's pretty much it and for I for the D-pad I do have a special uh, modifier I created myself to do the remapping I'll explain in a bit wait So to continue. So uh, this is important because let me show you what happened with L. OK. 
okay if kids can be a little bit tricky recording um, so d-pad is very interesting let me just delete this and show you what happened without the remap so you can see all right I need to also remove the dead zone uh, wait well, this the thing is you can simply disable the modifier for some reason so you just have to remove them uh, delete the, okay now we have the d-pad back as default so if you see the d-pad is just keep triggering uh, even if I didn't press anything right now if uh, 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 okay like that it just keep triggering. Um, the the D pad you know, on dual sense work in kind of weird way. I think I think the uh, Dual Shock Four works the same works similarly as well. So by default, it just keep outputting this over one value, and then if you press up button. Okay, let me see. Okay, press up button is actually zero. Okay, when I when I hold the up button, uh, is actually zero. And then because it has a different direction, it was just just like a you know, count uh, clockwise. It goes from if I go from top to top right, it becomes point one four three, and then to the right is point two eight six. Bottom right is 429, down is 571, down left is 714, left is 857, and then top left, up left is 1. Okay, so very unintuitive, but that's just how they do the do the D-pad on the controller. So how do we fix this? right uh, and map it to a like more uh, generic value range is you create a d-pad axis modifier here uh, you can how do you create that you basically go create a blueprint class and then just type input modifier and then this should show up and then once it you created it you just name it properly so I, I put them put mine here like this. So once you um, created it, you need to basically override this modify row function, and then uh, hook up the input current value and data time, and then you know just break up break apart and then do your modification here in the middle, and then make input action value of type and then pass to the return. So I already know it was 1.143, so I want the default uh, default value as zero. So there's no input whatsoever. So that's my input range. Then uh, compile, save, go back to your input mapping, and then under this axis eight here, which is the D-pad one, uh, you go to your modifier and create the modifier for the d-pad axis input modifier right and then you save it once you save it you can go back and then see okay now d-pad if I don't have anything input it says zero and then if I go to up it's actually the 1.143 and then you know going clockwise the value goes down right until I release and it back go back to zero. That's expected behavior. And now we need to do a dead zone to do the remapping, basically. So now we add another modifier, go to dead zone, and then we do need to fix this one. So we we know the upper threshold is 1.143, so just put it like that. And then we know the lower input, lower threshold is something like 0.1, something, something for the first value. Okay. 
So, uh, I got interrupted by my son again. And uh, uh, the lower threshold is 0.1 something. So we just put it with a really low value so we can clip off the input from zero. So I just put 0 0.01 and then save it. Now if we start again, there is no zero output right now if I didn't press anything. And then if I press up, it's going to be one. And then gradually become smaller value, smaller value, smaller value. And then this is top left, right? 0 0.017. And then if I release the D-pad, it just doesn't have any output, which is exactly what we want. And then you can, you know, start mapping your uh, D-pad action based on these values uh, you saw. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, what else? Let me think about And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Yeah. So for any other uh, enhanced input uh, mechanic or other things, you can Google. I believe there are many other tutorials. I just put this up to uh, let you know or keep a record how to map dual sense for Unreal Engine 5.1. Yep, that's all. Thank you so much.